mindfulness. <clears throat> okay, we're going to talk about this a little bit. And, and it's, uh, I want to readdress this. This is being awake. And really what it is, it's noticing stuff instead of just going through the motions. And there are many people that learn this uh, as part of therapy. There are some therapists that, that have mindfulness practices and meditation practices. But most people probably don't do, uh, uh, you know, people in our culture don't do that. But there are ways that people can intentionally start doing something different that increases their being awake, okay? And one of the payoffs of this is, is you notice some things that actually are pretty cool. Otherwise, you might tune out. But the other thing is there's some research that shows that when people start doing mindfulness practices, it changes the brain. And in particular, it increases the thickness of the cortex in the left frontal lobes. The left frontal lobe plays a significant role in emotion regulation, so we've got top-down control, but also the more the left frontal lobe is activated, people are better able to maintain flexibility in thinking. And when you run up against hard times, instead, instead of feeling, oh, what do I do, what do I do? It, it's very helpful to be able to say, no, wait a minute, I need to think about this from different perspectives and see what makes the most sense. Cognitive flexibility, all right. People talk about stop and smell the roses. Yeah, it's kind of a sort of a cliche for this, but that's really at the heart of this. It's making sure you stop and do something. People that are resilient, they, they haven't really learned this as much as they just do it, all right? And that is they are more likely to notice things moment to moment and to savor experiences. Now, here's two examples from my life. I'm getting better at this. Most of my life I look, oh, that's a beautiful sunset and I go on with what I'm doing, to savor the experience, I might say, that's a beautiful sunset, unless I'm driving or something, to just say, stay with it a little bit longer. Does it, is this going to solve the, these nightmarish life circumstances? No. But routinely, if they notice something like, see two kids playing together, it's like, isn't that great? Those kids are having such fun or eating, like actually chewing and tasting. Some of my friends who are, are they're, they're my, my good friends are not trying to criticize me, but they have said in the past, John, eating lunch with you is like eating lunch with a vacuum cleaner. I swear, you just like that. And, uh, and you know, I, what I've noticed since I've been giving this talk, it helps remind me, slow down. Okay, I take an extra five minutes. I've noticed that if you chew your food, you, you can taste it, you know. I, you know so I, I, I knew the concept, you know, but I had never had the, the direct experience. But the problem is people forget to do this. So let me show you. This comes out of Gilbert's uh, book. And this, for me, this really works well. Okay, now this is a photograph I took out of my front windshield. This is a road on the way to my house. What you can see there in the middle is a little rectangular thing, and that's a little stamp I put on there. And so I put it up there, and I said, okay, I'm going to start noticing stuff. I'm going to become more mindful on a regular basis. So I'm driving back and forth to work and all this kind of stuff. And every time I, I notice that, that's my little reminder. Just look around. Oh, oh okay. That's just cool. Driving on five minutes later, I see it. Oh, okay. I look at it. I, I remember the first day I just I came home and I said to my wife, I said, Bonnie, you know what? There's this highway I've been going back and forth for 30 years, my house to Sacramento, to my university. I said, hey, there's this like a mile of redwood trees on Highway 50. And she goes, yeah, and what are you trying to tell me? And I, I said, when, how long has that been there? And she goes, <laughs> forever? I don't know, for 30 years. Okay, now that's an example. Now, is that earth shattering? Is, is spending 10 more seconds watching the sunset a big deal? Is tasting your food? If noticing some happiness in children, is it a big deal? It turns out, you know what? If you do it on a regular basis, it is a big deal. Okay, it's mindfulness, all right? But here's the problem, and it's habituation, and this is what the brain does. In three weeks, that stamp becomes invisible. Your brain tunes it out. And that just happens. You, you get exposed to something again and again and again, and it's invisible. Okay? So what you do, need to do is you need to remind yourself to change the reminder. Okay? So I don't have it with me, but I got my appointment book. Every three weeks I have this big yellow check mark on my appointment book, and it's change the reminder. Okay? So, I, so right now at about 2 o'clock, not, not 2 o'clock, about 11 o'clock, 
That's a center. About 11 o'clock, I got an American flag sticker up there. And that's my reminder. Oh, oh, hey, look. See, I'll forget to do this. I'll forget to, people forget to do it. Three weeks from now, guess what's going to happen? Invisible. Everybody with me on that?